Well, hello, it's Liam from Unique Cars and Parts, and I'm with Neil from the Trafalgar Holden Motor Museum. And Neil's been very gracious in showing us around some of his cars, and of course, the the, the one, but well, this is the fourth and the fifth, fourth and the fifth, the the FB and the EK. And uh, I've just just before we started um, filming, I, I said to Neil, um, this this would be the EK, and that'd be the FB, but I had it the wrong way around. That's right, isn't it? That's correct. That's the FB and. This is the EK. Now, so the FB had the two-tone bodywork and the EK went to a single colour bodywork. Right. Well, no, it had the, uh, the, the roof the different colour, right. whereas the FB had the flash yep. down the side as a different colour. Got it. Okay, so this was the model after the FC. That's correct. 1960. 1960. Well, I can see from, from just looking from the side of it, they'd moved the special badge from the rear quarter panel up to the front quarter panel. They made it a little bit longer and put three stars next to it to really, really make the special stand out. That's exactly right. Yes, yeah, she, uh, she was a... Well, it was sort of a, an oddball. About this time, Holden got stuck a little bit um, because they were just sort of changing bodies, but very little mechanical changes were being made. And uh, the press were uh, uh, quite um, hostile with them, I think. they. Uh, but the, the only thing that this one had, the engine was just bought out just slightly more. And it was about the only change they made in the grey motor all the way through to the to 63. So, uh, so the press were giving them a hard time because they didn't think that they were developing and keeping up with what, competitive cars overseas? That's basically it. But when you, uh, when you start talking about that, you've also got to have a look at uh, everything that Holden did was made in Australia. And as I was talking to one chap and he said, oh, everyone was saying we didn't have radios. But if they wanted to put a radio in there, they had to go to AWA. Um, and they were probably twice, three times, four times as price of anything imported. So, uh, you know, you've got to have a look at the times and what they were doing. Now, th th this, this car would still, we're still looking at drum brakes on this, aren't we? We are. Uh, the disc brakes HK or were that uh, EH? Uh, HD, I know, had disc brakes, uh, or they were an option. Um, and I think the same with a HR. So, if, you, if anyone who's used to, what, what are the pitfalls of drum brakes? I mean, they're, they're cheaper to maintain, aren't they? Oh, they're fairly simple to work on, but. Uh, you don't want to get too much water in there either at the same time. You well, well, you don't. You, difficult to drive in the rain because I'm, I'm thinking that we're still looking at vacuum-operated uh, windscreen wipers. I think we're looking at electric. Oh, we I'm, are, I'm wrong. We have stepped up a big time. There's a major uh, technological advancement going on here. And, uh, yeah, I think they're, I'm pretty sure they're electric. So, so unlike the FE and the FC, at least you'd be able to see the accident happening when your <laughs> brakes weren't working. <laughs> That's exactly correct. Now, as we come to these two cars, you said there's one easy way to tell the FB and the EK apart, and that's from the grille. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So... Just that the emblem there is... That, that's the EK emblem. That's the EK I'm, emblem. And, and if I come around to the front of this car... It, it doesn't have an emblem like that. No, it doesn't have it. And you can go through panel vans or utes, and all of them have that emblem on it. Are there any, uh, Neil, are there any other differences between the FB and the EK? Basically, the EK was the first of the, uh, of the automatics. Up until the EK, you, you were manual three on the tree, and that was all there was to it. Now you've got a three-speed automatic in the... Uh, the, the high dramatic. The hydromatic. And, and do you know, were they popular? Oh, I believe so. Yeah, the hydromatic, I think, was a very popular uh, three-speed. It was, you know, had a lot of things going for it. I don't really understand why they took it into two-speed later on, but uh, certainly through to the E8s, they were, uh, they were three-speed, and I think everybody at the time loved them. So. Well, in the sales literature that uh, is on Unique Cars and Parts, they often have... It's not to say that necessarily it was for female drivers, but they show a female with the driving with the, her foot on the accelerator and putting it into drive. So uh, obviously they were trying to appeal to the female driver who might prefer an automatic transmission than trying to crunch the gears through. Uh, th these got synchromesh on first. Uh, these do, I think. Yes, I can't. I, I can't honestly remember, but I think they do. Yes, makes makes it makes for easier driving. Uh, absolutely. 
it's interesting you say that because uh, if you go back through the history, the FE when it came out, they were trying to appeal to the the women drivers, and the and their plug was that you could, you know, the FE was so easy to drive, even Mrs Jones could drive it. I don't know that you'd get away with that today, would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to ask the wife. Would you get away? Would you get away with that in marketing these days? No, it's it's a it's a no. <laughs> So, we'll forgive them. T- times are different. Absolutely. Yeah, but this this is this is an outstanding. One one of the things too I, I like about these cars. I remember when I was growing up and as a teenager looking at these old Holdens and some of the colours like this particular grey, I I would look at it and go, Bleh. but it's funny. It's like as you mature and you get to like red wine. Um, this colour now appeals. It's it's quite weird, but I think this it looks absolutely fantastic. And probably I prefer that to the blue, which you know, as a teen, I would have gone the blue any day of the week. But now, if I was to to say I've, I'd pick one of these, I'd I'd go with this particular car. Now, as I look at the differences between them, this one has a market. I know you mentioned the badge, so you can tell the emblem uh, is is a is an improvement. But it seems to me that this one has a far better sort of air intake trying to get it into the passenger compartment. That's the air conditioning again. That's the air conditioning. But then they went to the, the, the fluted style that is so common on all the models of Holden that followed on from that, right through to the HQ. That's right, yeah. But, uh, yeah, they were sort of trying to get a bit more air through them, probably because there's a bit more glass around now um, and, and probably a bit warmer inside. No seatbelts, though. The seatbelts became compulsory in about '66. And the, the first HRs that came out were not supplied with uh, seat belts, and but even though the points were there to, to bolt them in. So we're looking at a car that's uh, long before seat belts were legislated against. I'm guessing that's uh, not safety glass, or would it be safety glass? But you still wouldn't want to go through the screen, would you? No fear. Uh, you certainly would not. They would shatter like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, so they'd, they'd min- you'd be sort of mincemeat as you come through the other end. Um, <clears throat> you've got uh, drum brakes, so your stopping power is not too good. And um, collapsible steering columns, when did they come in? That's a damn good question. I have got absolutely no idea. Uh, well, it, it, they did a lot of damage, you know. I was thinking the other night to myself, you know, there's been so many... What are the main things that have changed over, you know, generations of cars? And to my mind, you know, we've got sat nav and all and Bluetooth and all the little... little um, perks that uh, come with technology, but I think the biggest change has been in safety and perhaps the steering column. I mean, everyone talks about seatbelts, but the collapsible steering column, to my mind, is probably the biggest lifesaver that that was around, particularly back in the 60s. So I'll have to do some research and find out whether this thing came with a collapsible steering column. I think it did, uh, to my memory, but it, uh, I'm not sure when they did bring it. I'm, I'm guessing the HD, but uh, I'm sure some Holden aficionados will correct me if I've got that wrong. I'm just at the side of the car with Neil, having a look at the interior, just to compare it with the uh, FEFC and the previous FJ and the 48215. And once again, Holden have excelled themselves with the exact same instrumentation as they've had on every model, a speedo, a fuel gauge, and three warning lights. What more do you need? This is the GMH Proving Ground, the only automobile proving ground in Australia. Here, Holden has been proved over all types of roads. Holden is still the only car specifically designed in Australia for Australia. And Holden is the only car that offers you the performance, the economy, the ruggedness and the value that have been proved by more than 700,000 Australian motorists right here in Australia. Holden is truly Australia's own car. How long have you been driving at Holden, sir? Uh, six years. Um, well, you haven't been driving this one for that length of time, no, so you must no. have had others too. Well, we've had about six, I think. Have you? What makes you buy Holden? Well, I just think it's the best value we have. Yes, yeah, best rock- value for uh, money. And it's a reliable car. Yes, well, we've got three others also. Have you? You're in business? In business, yes. And you always buy Holden? Always buy Holden. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it that appeals to you other than the value of the car? Well, uh, Quite frankly, I think that's about my main interest as a business uh, proposition. 
But this is your own private car. Oh, and, yes, yes. Uh, the family well, happy with it? Oh, yes, yes. It's just the uh, right size for family, we think. Handy for parking. And do you like the finish on the Holden? Mm, quite good. Very good. There is just no question that Holden is built to look good and to last. That's why three times more Australians buy Holden than any other car. Australian as they come, that's Holden. All the family, take a wheel. Feel that new big style of feel. First in styling, first in sales. Holden's number one. Holden, 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 Holden. Take those hills, mile on mile. Mile with Holden's new big style. First in styling, first in sales. Holden's number one. Holden, 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 Holden. One to drive, see your dealer, he'll buy. Big Star Holden's your best buy. First in styling, first in sales.